Here's another example of uh, checking out a guitar before I pack it up. This is a Gallagher dock watching model and it came in for quite a few things. Uh, number one, the bridge had been replaced and it was a massive, massive bridge. It was literally half an inch tall. I'm not talking about the saddle, I'm talking about the bridge. Half an inch tall and that is a massive piece of, of ebony. Um, a vintage Martin bridge would be about 0.320 of an inch high. So this one was 480. That's a lot. So one of my jobs was to um, reshape the bridge. Uh, I had to get it out of here. The, uh, the bridge is bolted on as well as glued on. Had to get the bolts out of it. Uh, shave the bridge down. Reshape it. Glue it back on. That was a lot of work right there in itself. And then I recut the saddle stop for some reason. I'm not sure if I moved it back for intonation. Yeah, I did. I moved it back for correct intonation. It was too far forward. The guitar played really super sharp. I moved it back. Well, a complete saddle slot back. And then put little abalone or black pearl dots back on here where they had had bridge dots. So when I did that, obviously the accent was a mass, uh, super, super low at that point. And that was part of the problem is that they had used a super tall bridge to get the action up and it was still too low. So what this guitar had was a bad neck angle, but not the normal way. It was too far backwards, giving it a really incredibly low action. Um, in fact, when I we got the bridge done, the strings are sitting flat on the fingerboard. So I'd take the neck off and I had to do a reverse neck angle on it. And to do that, I put shims under it, which I've done before on this Gallagher guitars. <laughs> they, they like to put a massive bridge on it. Okay. So I use shims under, under the neck to bring the neck angle actually forward. Um, then there's no hiding those shims, you know. So I don't even try. I just make them black. And it kind of goes with the black heel cap. It goes with the black binding over here. Uh, the other thing about getting the neck off is I couldn't hit the pocket. Because Gallagher uses this really super shallow dovetail joint and it's like right here Martin would be back here on the 15th Martin would be like this deep Gallagher is like this deep it's a really shallow I couldn't hit it so I couldn't get the steam needle in there so I actually had to come in the back through the heel right here and go in that way and get steam it was quite a job let me tell you so I put shims on it it has the typical big fat wide flat frets, which are horrible for intonation um, on an acoustic guitar. They're worn out, they're flat top, so the strings are just going to slide back and forth on them, and who knows where they're going to intonate, you know? So I put a full Evo fret job on it, with um, standard 80 wide by 43 inch tall wide, full Evo fret. Ebony pinch, put the neck back on, got all that cleaned up, I think that's all. It was a lot of work. And now I'm going to check it out. It's going to go home tomorrow, so I'm going to check everything. I'm going to check the nut, and to do that again, I'm holding it down between the um, second and third fret, and I'm looking at the clearance over the first fret. I want just the tiniest, tiniest bit of clearance. And that's all real good. If I have any question, I get my feeler gauges out, and I... I'm going to take a 12 thousandths of an inch and hold it down at the first fret and I measure the clearance over the second fret. And I see that it just doesn't quite clear 12 thousandths of an inch. It's probably 10. So that means if this is 10 thousandths of an inch, I would like it to clear 12, maybe 14 at the first fret. So I'm going to take that 12 and push it back through here again. And I've got good clearance there. So again, I can, I can uh, double check. I can get a, uh, yeah, it's a double check. Um, that's what I call the extrapolation technique. You know, you measure, you fret it at the first fret. You measure the clearance over the second fret. And then you want that clearance plus maybe two thousandths, maybe four thousandths of an inch. Give it a little bit of room for wear. And I want that clearance over the first fret. 
And that way it's independent of where the shadow is. Uh, it's a linear thing that way. You know, you can measure a couple of frets if you wanted to and help you get the number that you want to extrapolate back to, but I've done this long enough that that's a good thing to do. I already checked the nut. It was all good, but that's, you know, well, I just did it again. That's one thing you do. Now, I'm going to check what I call the next fret, and I just took my glasses off. They're my frets, so I'm going to check. And I just hold the string down at a fret, and I tap it at the next one. And I'm looking for the same sort of clearance. I don't want anything that's a sudden decrease in clearance. And I definitely want it to clear the next fret, otherwise you're going to have a buzz, right? Okay, every single fret. You can do it pretty fast, actually. You don't even really have to tap it, you can look. I've got a backlight up here, so I can actually see a shadow of the string on the fret. Is all good? Looking for high frets. This actually fretted really nicely. It took a lot of time getting it clean. That one's good. Did I turn my mic on? <laughs> I think I did. Yeah, I did. You know, I've done one of these and I forgot to turn the mic on. I think I did clear. Generally, if, if one clears, they're all clear. In other words, you generally can't have one single high spot, you know. It's possible, but there'll be two or three high spots. It's a horrible noise, isn't it? It's good. It's got a pretty average action on it. 93,000 of an inch on the low E. It's good. Remember when I first got this guitar and strung it up that this bridge, the strings were laying flat on the fingerboard. Uh, they were flat right up in here, but there was a gap back in this area. <laughs> so when I refretted it, you know, I took care of all that. That was uneven frets. They were higher up over the body and they'd been sanded down and worn down back here. So the frets were just a mess. So this guitar is good to go. And let's check the action. Told you I'd check it, but I'm going to check it again for you. And 90 thousandths of an inch. And I just want to see that it's a little clear. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to call that 93. It could be 92, 91, who cares. 76 thousandths. That's good. That's good. All good. Action looks good. Hasn't changed. You know, I've already checked it. When I was using the saddle, obviously, I've checked it like three or four times. So now I'm just double checking it, last check, make sure everything's good. Now we're get it in tune and we're going to play a little bit. And Gallagher, Doc Watson. I'm sure I knocked it out of tune. Messing with it. Quick thing on tuning. I have a whole other video on tuning, but let's refresh some of this. When I tune a guitar, um, I tend to use more of the fretted notes than I do the open notes at the, you know, you fret. And so I tune it to the notes that you play. That's, you know, what I do. So I'm checking the... I like to use A's and D's. I can't remember why. There's a good reason why, but I don't remember. See, the B says it's in tune. Now the D's in tune, but I did tweak it. I also generally like to tune up to the note, and uh, it's pulling across the nut, it keeps the tension on the strings rather than loosening it. If your nut's in good shape and it's good material, it shouldn't be a problem, but I still like to tune up to it.
perfectly in tune or anything, but it's in tune good enough that I can hear it, or that I can evaluate it. I like to check my frets, rub my hand up and down, see how they feel. I don't do a very sharp bevel on the frets, and so you can feel the frets a little bit. Um, you also get more clear, or you get a, um, your frets don't fall off the fingerboard. A little bit more forgiving. <coughs> guitar. The neck is uh, very flat back and I understand that Doc Watson liked the neck because it was kind of like his Les Paul and it's very much like that. It is not a Martin Shafi. It's a flat back neck. Um, you're making bar chords on it all day long. It feels like a Les Paul neck. punchy guitar I can hear I can hear the circle with the circle being broken <laughs> album on this thing it's, uh, how does it go Vasher <laughs> Thank you. 
stop in the old memory banks. Okay, that's a Doc Watson. Doc Watson tune. Down yonder? Yeah. Okay, well, you know, it's a different guitar. I mean, it's not a Martin. It's got its own voice, its own characteristics. It's a lot like a Moshman in that in that regard. Um, it's a little bit of a heavy guitar. Not a pre-war D18, that's for sure. It's got a pretty heavy lacquer on it. I mean, it's checked pretty bad here. And it looks like Gibson checking, if you know what I mean. Martin checking is a spider rib. Gibson checking goes jagged edges, and that's what this looks like. It's a it's a it's a Gibson sort of checking, uh, big jagged edges everywhere, which tells me the finish is a little bit on the thick side. And uh, but you know, it's got its own unique voice and sound. And there it is. It's a Gallagher Doc Watson. Gonna go in a box and get out of here.